Now everybody, let me tell you a story about Hollywood shame Ooh. Where terrible actors and scripts collide Oh, what a mess it is on the other side So the lights, camera, action begin But all I got was a movie that plunged in a spin From the first scene to the credits that roll oh, Taking its toll Silver screen says cool That movies galore Can't help but wonder what the hell Were they making these for Throwing some cliches A sharp and predictable plot It's a train wreck I tell you it's all they ever got And now for our feature presentation Welcome to the Silver Screen Cesspool, where we review the poo. And now your host, the surveyor of the cinema, the mocker of moronic movies, the terror of Tiny Town, the last known survivor of Battlefield Earth, the one of many, Alan Smith E. The 2013 film Carne the Taco Maker is the story of Don Taco and the delicious tacos he makes. Don Taco sells his delicious tacos via street cart on the streets of Beverly Hills, rolling like a celebrity. It's a bit of a local institution, and while everyone loves his delicious tacos, it's said that the taste varies from person to person. That joke will pay off later, I promise. Except for the occasional heckler who accuses him of serving up Beverly Hills Chihuahua, no one bothers to question where the delicious taco meat comes from, because that's kind of a weird thing to do. Unless you're the local health inspector whose job is to do that, but in this movie he only questions it when the answer is a bribe. But as it turns out, they should be questioning, where's the beef? Because that's not beef, it's something more sinister. It's people! Soylent tacos are made out of people! Okay, that first joke will make sense now. Anyway, Don Taco has a crush on Maria, the girl whose apartment overlooks the taco cart. And as it turns out, her boyfriend is a bit of a jack-off. But she's with him because she fell in love in East L.A. to the sounds of the guitar played by Carlos Santana. Don Taco, with the help of his brother and Igor-like assistant, is slicing and dicing up anyone who even slightly annoys them and serving them in their delicious tacos with a side of fried green tomatoes. The first time we see this on screen, it's just some dude who is down and out in Beverly Hills. Then it's some annoying woman who is hitting on him. Apparently, delicious people tacos is an old family recipe, we're then treated to a flashback of dad murdering and killing this woman who is really a housewife of Beverly Hills. Meanwhile, at present, the health inspector, with the help of two local thugs, is planning to rob the taco cart. Brother Igor Taco is cross-dressing to seduce drunks off the street and health inspectors, too, to make them into delicious tacos. That kind of puts a wrench on that whole robbery plan, at least for a while. Don Taco gets invited to be on a cooking show. This, like many scenes, goes absolutely nowhere and is never mentioned again. When Maria and Douchebag, boyfriend, get an eviction notice, Maria runs to Don Taco to vent. He invites her to a non-taco dinner, and the boyfriend is all like, Hey dude, that's my woman. She slaps him and he runs off. As Maria prepares for her not-a-date date, brother Igor Taco watches her through a peephole because he's in love with her too. Her friend warns her that Don Taco's just trying to get into her pants and gives her a ball-peen hammer to protect herself. That seems like something that's going to end well for everybody involved. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be rooting for here in this movie because everybody seems kind of awful. So Don Taco gives off this creepy vibe the entire date. I mean, not just murdery creepy vibe, I mean like creepy creepy vibe. And Igor crashes the date. 
professing his love for Maria. But Don Taco throws him out. Cut to um, somewhere else, maybe outside of Don Taco's home or inside Maria's or perhaps inside a abandoned warehouse i'm not sure but maria's friend is there looking for her and when she runs into igor taco uh he beans her with a ball peen hammer the jerk boyfriend then comes looking for maria and he also gets whacked in the dome with the hammer only maria hears this happening and attempts to flee the scene uh, but Mama Taco comes out and stops her. Maria is taken down to the murder room, I mean, cellar, which is festively decorated with netted Christmas lights, and she's chained to a pole. It's at this point one of our burglars decides to break in, and seeing her held captive, frees her and her friend, who I didn't even realize was still alive, let alone in the same room, being held in a four-sided box. Uh, they literally just slid this thing out from the wall and freed her. She could have escaped at any time she wanted to, so I have to wonder if she really wanted to. So Maria, the burglar, and the friend decide to split up. This really just means the friend leaves alone, almost like she's trying not to really escape. But the burglar gets hacked by Brother Taco. And Maria somehow winds up on the floor without any explanation. When Mama Taco tells Brother Taco to kill her, he pretends to and tells Maria to play dead. I love you. Brother Taco then searches the house for the friend. The friend makes it outside and despite having a several minute head start, is somehow only inches outside of the door when Brother Taco makes it outside. It's almost like she's really not wanting to escape. She runs around the block screaming, though, for help, and while I'm sure she would have liked a Beverly Hills cop, I'm sure she would have settled for a Beverly Hills ninja, or a Beverly Hillbilly, or even a member of Troop Beverly Hills, but she finds none of them, so she be dead now. Mama Taco begins basting Maria's still-dressed body, which is weird because I feel like clothing would affect the taste of the delicious tacos. I don't know, though, for sure. This is just a hunch. I want to make that very clear. Um, so now we're at the wedding Don Taco promised to cater earlier in the movie, which I totally forgot about because it seemed like one of those throwaway scenes at the time. And I think everybody else kind of forgot about it, too, because only a dozen people were attending this Mexican wedding. So I, I'm also unclear why they needed a caterer for a dozen people. I mean, I don't think delicious tacos in a white wedding dress is the best idea. But if this is what they want to spend their money on, uh, okay. In rebellion and a little bit of jealousy, Brother Taco puts... Fingers in the taco meat, not his fingers, like dead people's dismembered fingers into the taco meat. This is uh, understandably upsetting to the wedding goers. And after yelling at Don Taco for, uh, quote, fingering his wife's taco, end quote, one angry dude shanks him. I feel like this entire movie was made just to lead up to that one joke out. If I were get to give this movie a rating on a scale from 0 to 10, I would rate it a negative 90210. Silver Screen Cesspool is written, directed, and starring Alan Smithy. Assistant Director, Producer, and Stunt Coordinator, Alan Smithy. Boom Mic Operator, Sound Editing and Music by Alan Smithy. Construction Coordinator, The Amazing Rando, Makeup by Crayola. Catering was provided by the Soylent Corporation. Alan Smithy will be back in Return of the Curse of the Planet of the Prehistoric Bikini Ninjas versus Kingdom of the Bride of the Killer, Shark Cheerleaders 2, Electric Boogaloo.